Finding true love in this world can be an arduous task. Consider my plight, I've tirelessly sought the ideal life partner, only to see my expectations dashed time and again, lamented Nanny Doss to the police, wearing a melancholic smile, shortly after her arrest for the murders of her husbands. Real romance seems to exist only in books, it eludes me in life. Initially perceived as an incredibly sweet elderly woman, Nanny Doss exuded warmth through her frequent smiles, jokes, and laughter. Described by many as a bright, sunny, and kind-hearted person, she was a married mother of four who reveled in babysitting her grandchildren. Beneath this charming exterior, however, lurked a horrifying secret. The string of murders traced back to 1927, with Nanny eventually confessing to killing four of her five husbands. Authorities suspected her involvement in the deaths of eight blood relatives as well. Early Years Nanny's journey began on November 4, 95, in Blue Mountain, Alabama, born into a farming family. Her father, James Hazel, opted to keep his five children at home for chores and livestock care instead of sending them to school. Nanny, harboring disdain for her overbearing father, received a makeshift education from her mother, Louise, who, unable to oppose her oppressive husband, taught the children to read and write. A turning point occurred during a train trip when Nanny was seven years old. The family's journey was interrupted abruptly, causing the young girl to strike her head on the metal back of a seat. This incident resulted in a life-altering head injury, plaguing her with persistent headaches and occasional loss of consciousness for years. Approaching adolescence, Doss found solace in her favorite pastime, immersing herself in her mother's romantic books and magazines. With all her heart, the young girl harbored dreams of embodying the heroines depicted in these tales. Later, she confessed that her subscription to magazines was solely driven by one section, aptly named Lonely Hearts. It's conceivable that she sought the love that eluded her, given her father's stern demeanor. He went to great lengths, even prohibiting his daughters from using makeup or wearing fashionable attire, under the belief that such measures would shield them from unwanted attention from men. Adding to the restrictions, he barred his daughters from attending dances and any gatherings with a substantial number of people. This stringent control likely dealt a profound blow to the teenager's psyche, considering Nanny's inherently sociable and cheerful nature. First Marriage At the age of 16, Nanny Doss secured employment at a linen factory where she crossed paths with a fellow worker named Charlie Braggs. After four months of getting to know each other and navigating their emotions, the couple was on the verge of parting ways. However, the girl's father insisted that they tie the knot. I only married because my father pushed for it. It happened in 1921. We had known each other for just four or five months. Charlie had no other family, only a mother who became a dominant presence in my life after our marriage. She was a difficult woman, Nanny later disclosed. Between 1921 and 1927, Charlie and Nanny welcomed four daughters into the world. However, as their last child arrived, their marriage was already unraveling. The strain was attributed, in all likelihood, to the constant presence of Charlie's overbearing mother, who resided with them and proved to be an even more demanding parent than Doss' father. Strange Deaths in 1927, a tragic and perplexing turn of events unfolded for the couple when their two middle daughters fell suddenly ill and succumbed almost simultaneously without the opportunity for timely medical intervention. The deaths were shrouded in mystery, the young girls had been in perfect health, and their sudden demise defied explanation. Charlie, sensing an unsettling undercurrent, made a decisive move. 
Taking his eldest daughter, Melvina, he abruptly left, leaving Nanny behind with newborn Florina and her mother. A few months later, Bragg's mother passed away. In the interim, Nanny, now the sole provider for Florina and herself, secured employment at a cotton mill. Charlie's return in 1928 was not a reconciliation, but the finalization of their divorce. In exchange for granting the divorce, Nanny insisted on custody of Melvina, a condition to which her husband acquiesced. Interestingly, Braggs later confessed that he parted ways with his wife out of sheer fear, describing himself as terrified of her. Second Marriage Nearly half a year post-divorce, Das sought solace in her cherished Lonely Hearts magazine column and connected with Robert Harrelson from Florida. Harrelson poured his heart into beautifully romantic letters and Das reciprocated with equally sensuous responses accompanied by provocative photos. Their virtual connection led to a real-life meeting and by 1929 they exchanged vows in marriage. However, just a few months into their union, Nanny uncovered facets of Harrelson's character beyond the romantic facade. Her spouse not only battled alcoholism, but also had a criminal record for assault. Despite these revelations, their marital bond endured for a full 16 years. Accidents During her second marriage, a tragic incident occurred involving her newborn granddaughter, who, just a few days old, met an unusual and untimely demise. Strangely, a stiletto had found its way into the child's nose, reaching the brain and causing her death. Within a few months of this heart-wrenching tragedy, Nanny Doss found herself in the midst of another sorrow. Her two-year-old grandson, Robert, passed away under her care, succumbing to suffocation. Both deceased children were the offspring of Melvina, the eldest daughter of the usually cheerful and good-natured Nanny Das. Following these heartbreaks, attention turned to Nanny's husband Robert. His jubilation over the end of World War II extended for months, becoming a source of apparent monotony for Nanny. Seemingly bored, she added a secret ingredient to his alcohol, leading to his sudden illness and demise less than a week later, on September 15, 1945. The doctor attributed Robert's death to food poisoning. In the aftermath, Nanny received the insurance payout for Harrelson's death and utilized the funds to purchase a quaint house with a small plot near Jacksonville. Third Marriage In 1952, Arlie Lanning from Lexington passed away just a few years after responding to Nanny Doss's advertisement expressing her desire to find true love. In a rather amusing turn of events, she married him a mere three days after their first encounter. Similar to Harrelson, Lanning struggled with alcoholism, but his shortcomings extended to infidelity as well. Despite Arlie's frequent indiscretions, Nanny did not acquiesce, occasionally disappearing from home for weeks. Yet, when she was present, she consistently played the role of a caring and devoted wife. Doss eventually confessed to lacing one of the dishes with poison and serving it to her husband, who was deep into another bout of heavy drinking. The doctors attributed his demise to a heart attack induced by alcohol. As in the previous instance, Nanny secured a substantial insurance payout and promptly deposited the money in the bank, intending to live off the interest. Notably, Lanning's mother remained in her care, but the elderly woman passed away in her sleep just a month after her son's death. Fourth Marriage Shortly after her mother-in-law's demise, Nanny received a letter from her ailing and unmarried sister, Dovi, requesting assistance. Eager to lend support, Das promptly arrived, only to witness her sister's swift passing. With distractions out of the way, Nanny resolved to seek love anew. 
1952, she enlisted the services of the Diamond Circle Club dating agency, connecting with Richard Morton from Kansas. Unlike her previous spouses, Richard abstained from alcohol, but immersed himself in gambling and the company of other women. Unaware of these tendencies, Doss was preoccupied with other matters. The need for care arose when Louise, Nanny's mother, suffered a hip fracture after a fall. With her father deceased and siblings scattered across the country, Nanny, despite feeling distracted, answered the call for help. However, this incident appeared to be an unfortunate misunderstanding, diverting her from a blissful family life. Despite visiting her mother in November 1952, she passed away a couple of months later. After a brief period of mourning, Nanny confronted her husband and discovered his blatant infidelity. Having taken care of her mother, she redirected her focus to the unfaithful spouse, whose days were numbered. Morton met a mysterious demise three months later on May 19, 1953, and once again, Doss eluded suspicion. Fifth Marriage Manny's ultimate victim was Samuel Doss of Oklahoma, a man who neither indulged in alcohol nor engaged in infidelity. His mistake was of a different nature, he suggested to his wife that she could only read magazines or watch educational television programs. Enduring her strict husband for a while, Nanny eventually decided to craft a prune pie for him, infused with her special touch. In October 1954, Samuel found himself hospitalized for about a month, but returned home seemingly unharmed. However, just a few days later, Nanny served him a fatal cup of coffee, and he succumbed within hours. It was at this point that Nanny Doss made a crucial error. The doctor who had attended to her fifth and final husband had harbored suspicions during Samuel's prolonged hospitalization, although lacking concrete proof of poisoning. The doctor astutely convinced Nanny that she could secure a double life insurance payout if she consented to her husband's autopsy. Driven by greed, Nanny reluctantly agreed. The Evidence As anticipated, the doctor discovered alarming levels of arsenic in Samuel Doss's body and promptly notified the police. Nani Das found herself arrested on November 1, 1954. Shortly thereafter, she admitted to the murders of four out of her five ex-husbands, but vehemently denied any involvement in the deaths of other family members. Upon exhumation of some alleged victims, authorities uncovered traces of arsenic or rat poison in all cases. Remarkably, Doss had utilized readily available ingredients from any store at the time. Perhaps most astonishing was the fact that, throughout the entire duration, none of the woman's relatives or acquaintances harbored even a shred of suspicion regarding the murders. This may well be attributed to her sweet smile, presenting an image of harmlessness and extreme good-naturedness. The police held strong suspicions that she had taken the lives of at least 12 individuals, primarily her blood relatives. Motive Incidentally, when questioned about her motive, Doss attributed her actions to a head injury sustained during childhood, claiming it transformed her into a heinous criminal. Amusingly, journalists bestowed upon her the moniker Giggling Grandma. Every time she recounted the tales of dispatching her late husbands, she wore a smile and occasionally let out a coquettish laugh. Over time, she acquired additional nicknames, including the Jolly Black Widow and the Lonely Hearts Killer. Curiously, according to Doss, her motives weren't driven by financial gain but by the influence of romantic magazines that had irreversibly impacted her psyche. I was seeking the perfect partner, a true romantic in life, but alas. Whenever Nanny realized her husband fell short of her ideal, she simply disposed of him 
and moved on to the next spouse or another victim. Given that most of Doss's husbands suffered from health issues like alcoholism or heart disease, it took an extended period for doctors and police to suspect foul play. Sentenced to life, Nani Doss spent less than a decade in prison, meeting her demise in 1964 at the age of 59. I hope you like this story. Please don't forget to leave a comment sharing with your thoughts below. Give a thumbs up this video and remember to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more captivating stories. Thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey and we'll see you in the next video.